creating discussions. A Brightspace tip brought to you by the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Office of Instructional Technology. In this video, we're going to talk about teachers' options for creating discussions. We in the Office of Instructional Technology are big fans of directing teachers to the content menu option whenever they're creating any lesson materials, assignments, or quizzes. But in the case of discussions, this is going to be an instance in which we tell you to use the discussion tool to create the discussion and then add it to content afterwards. That way you still get the benefits of the content area where you can organize it into your current unit, but by creating it in the discussions menu option, you get a lot more options for your settings to control what students can and cannot do as a part of your discussion prompt. So for this video, we're going to start by choosing the menu option, discussions. If you don't have discussions on your menu for the class you can always add it from within your course admin area so that you can access this particular tool once on the discussions page you'll see any existing discussions that you have created listed in the workspace but right here at the top we have the blue button in the upper left to create a new discussion now there are two levels to all of your discussions the topmost level is what's known as a forum then inside of your forum you have have topics. We like to think of the forum as being a bookshelf and the topic being a book. So your forum can house several different topics if you would like to or it can house just one. But the first step to creating a new discussion is to create a brand new forum to house that discussion question. So I'm going to select on the forum option and I'm going to title my forum Seasons. And then we have a few options underneath. For example, we have the area to put in a description. This could be where you type out uh, how you plan to use this discussion forum or specific instructions for your students. You'll notice that you have the same toolbar that you see across many other assignments and lesson materials where you can uh, not only change your text features, but you can also add links, images, attachments, videos, and so on. Any sort of material you have that might be relevant to the students engaging in the discussions that will go within this forum. Then we have a few options down below. For example, we can allow anonymous posts. Now I know that this is one that makes teachers very nervous because as soon as you say students can be anonymous, they're concerned about what they might post, whether it's off topic or inappropriate. Please note that anonymous posts are never anonymous for the teacher. They will only be anonymous to the other students in the classroom. The teacher can also always see who has posted what in a discussion. Our second option there is that users must start their own thread before they can reply to or read threads of others. This is great if you're actually asking the students to demonstrate some knowledge. If you want a discussion about a topic that you've done in class recently, before you let them read the posts of their classmates and borrow ideas from them, they have to post their own thread in order to even see the responses of their classmates. Your third option down there is for you to be able to moderate the posts so that before class, uh, before students in the class are able to see those posts, you would be able to see them and approve them. And then finally, we have the option to include the description of the forum under each discussion topic. So those are four things for you to consider when creating the forum for your discussion. Once you have your forum all set up, you can choose the button here if you are ready to continue on to build and choose a save and add topic. So that's the one I'm going to choose. And now we go to that second level here uh, in creating the discussion, and that is creating the topic. You want to think of your topic as being the actual prompt that your students are responding to. And you'll have the same two fields. You have the title field at the top, and then underneath you have the description field. To my mind, 
If your discussion prompt is very short, like name your favorite season, I could easily fit that in the title field. However, if my prompt is going to be much longer than that, or if I plan to have several topics within this forum, then I might want to have the distinguishing feature for each of the topics up here in the title, and then the specific prompt that I'm asking the students to respond to down in the description box. For example, my forum here is on seasons. I might choose to have a topic for each of the four seasons, like this one is spring, and then my prompt asks the students to choose which topic they want to engage in based on which is their favorite season. And they're going to say two reasons why it's their favorite season and then one activity that they like to engage in during that season. So I've got the simple title of the topic in the title field and then the actual prompt that tells the students how to respond and what to include in their post is down there in the discussion area. If we scroll down, once again, we have options for our topic, and they are three of the same options that we had for the forum. The option to allow anonymous posts, to uh, require users to start their own thread before replying to someone else's, and then that ability for uh, the teacher to moderate posts before they appear in the discussion for all of the class. If you want to apply those settings to the entire forum and all topics within the forum, you you will choose those settings for the forum itself. If you want to apply different options or settings to topics within a forum, then you would apply those here. Finally, at the bottom, we have one of my favorite options here, which is the ability to allow students to rate posts. So you have your standard option like giving it a star rating very much like a Yelp review, but we also have the ability to up and down vote or simply to upvote alone. I particularly love the upvote option because if you're asking students um, to tell uh, any misconceptions they still have about the topic or misunderstandings that they have, the ability for classmates to upvote tells you how many students in the class still have those same questions or confusion about the topic and that can help you build on to your lesson uh, to make sure that you're meeting the needs of your students. Once you have your discussion prompt and all of those settings applied, you're ready to click save and close. Now you may recall at the beginning of the video I said we prefer to set up the discussions under the discussion menu option because of all of those settings that I just showed you in the video. But you also want to be able to organize this discussion question under your content so students can easily find it in the current unit. So next we're going to go to content and we're going to add that brand new discussion that we just created into our current unit. So here we are in our unit selected at the top of content and because I've already created the discussion question I'm going to choose it by selecting add existing and then I'm going to choose discussion. This is going to show me all of the discussion questions that I have created in this course. You'll see my seasons forum down here at the bottom and the one topic that I have is spring. So now my discussion question has been added here under my current unit and when I'm ready for students to see it and engage I can simply make it visible to them and now I'm ready to add in my additional topics so that they can choose which season they would like to talk about. I hope this short video has helped you see how to create discussions, all of the setting options that teachers have for discussions, and then how to organize those discussions among your content and your current units within any of your courses.